part, I think the the goalie guys that I spoke to, they had him, you know, either number one or two on the goalie board behind uh, Skarek. So, uh, so I, yeah, I like him at that spot. Um, if I just pull up my list here, we'll see where I had him. I had him 73. And so, you know, he went 85. So, for, for, for my list, uh, that's that's really good value, and especially because there's a few goaltenders already grabbed in front of him a couple of surprises. For sure, yeah. And, and I, I kind of want to talk about two things here, moving a little bit away from the Ducks, just about the draft in general. And you, you look at some of the guys following and, di- and where, where teams are able to get a couple guys. You know, the, the first one for me is the New York Islanders and what they were able to do at this draft, getting Oliver Wallstrom and Noah Dobson at 11 and 12, and then getting Bodie Wild in the second round. Uh, maybe not the clear winners of this draft, but they definitely banked in on, on some high-end talent early on. Oh, without a doubt, I really, really liked what the Islanders did this draft. And, you know, they got Skarek uh, in the third round as well, so yeah. I, I like that pickup for them too. So uh, they were, you know, one of the one of the big winners. Anyways, I, I like what they did. I really liked what Detroit did. Chicago did well. Um, so there, there was a few teams that. It really came out, and they should be feeling good about themselves. Although, if you ask the GM, everybody feels good about themselves if they have yeah. the draft, right? We all got our guys. Um, we targeted them. We got our guys. So, uh, we'll, we'll have to look back here uh, in a year and three years and five years and see who uh, who actually did well. For sure. And about two centers I, I kind of want to talk about. One is Barrett Hayden and him jumping all the way up to number five for Arizona. And then Joe Valeno falling all the way down to 30 to Detroit. Uh, we'll start with, with Barrett Hayden. What do you think the Arizona likes so much about him that they've drafted him at five, or was it merely based on positional need for the organization? Well, it's interesting. So, uh, you know, I, I talked to uh, some people at the draft there, and you know, I talked to Jim Benning, and, and it sounded like uh, a lot of people liked Barrett Hayden early. So yeah. uh, it, was, it was rumored that Montreal was very strongly considering taking him at three. Uh, that they were really kind of on a coin flip with Kakaniemi or Hayden. Uh, obviously, they went that way. Uh, Arizona, uh, John Chayka, their GM there, uh, apparently his, his quote was that he was obsessed with Barrett Hayden. He, he watched every single shift he had this season, just loved his style of play. So he's a kid that you can see has uh, a lot of potential. So he, he's, he's pretty strong defensively already. He's a good two-way player, uh, played on a good team, kind of in a bit of a secondary role for part of the season, and, and he did carry a line, and, and he had strong playoff. He, he ran it from the bowl for that a little bit, where – uh, people projected him as maybe a third line center, maybe a second line center if everything went right. But he, he's taking nice, quick steps developmentally. So his skating improved this season um, pretty demonstrably from from the year before. Um, he got stronger, and you're hoping that you see that continue along. So it was definitely a, a surprise pick at five. But uh, word around the campfire was that Arizona was looking to slide back uh, and and still get him, and they were concerned that Vancouver might take him at seven, and Chicago was. I guess desperately trying to jump up and, and grab Hayden in front of some other teams too. So Arizona just decided to stay where they were and got their man. Yeah, and I think it was it surprised a lot of people. But again, even general managers they, they find a guy like you said obsess over that guy, and, and sometimes they'll pick him higher over some guys who might be ranked a little higher. Uh, and again, we we really don't know now. I mean, Arizona will feel like they had a good draft, and we won't know until three, five years down the road, whether it was a good choice or not. And, and I think the same thing might apply to Joe Valeno, who ends up falling all the way down to 30, almost out of the first round of Detroit. What do you have to say about that? Why do you think maybe he fell so low when some people had him possibly as the best center in the draft? Yeah, so I, I personally didn't feel that way. I had him in, in the mid-20s sort of yeah. thing, so I, I wasn't surprised his team slide down. And, and talking with some scouts uh, you know, in the months leading up to is that a lot of a lot of the Quebec pro scouts there didn't see him as a first round talent. So he's got great north south speed, uh, and you know he's he's got a, a nice a nice vision on the power play, a really nice power play distributor. But that's about it for me. So um, you know I don't want to knock the kid. He, he can do other things, obviously. But for offensive upside, I don't really see him as being a guy who can produce elite things. Uh, maybe has some some of those things that you like to say he's got he's got the tools, but maybe not the full tool belt. So uh, I wasn't surprised. I think Detroit did. You know, well, grabbing Zadina and Galeno in the first round like that—that that looks nice for their organizational depth chart, and maybe he'll use that as fuel for the fire and and really work hard this summer and and come back and prove some people wrong too. So uh, there's a really no knocking him down, but I, I think he went about where he should have. So the twenty to forty range for my money, you could have threw all the names in the hat and had a toddler pull him out, and it might have been as close as you could come. So uh, he was right in that uh, right in that range, and, and he went right in the middle of it. And, and we didn't really see. 
a lot of trades this year, and a lot of I think is it was surrounding Kovalchuk waiting to get signed, to, to everything surrounding John Tavares and, and some of the free agents available. But we did see one, and it turned out to be a pretty big trade. And, and Noah Hannafin and Elias Lindholm going to the Calgary Flames, uh, Adam Fox, Dougie Hamilton, and Michael Fairley coming back. What were your first thoughts uh, of that trade? As such a big trade, we're all waiting for one to happen. I guess everybody got rewarded with a blockbuster. Yeah, so it's funny. I've had my mind focused so much on the draft and yeah. the prospects. I haven't really sat down and, and digested that trade too much, but uh, just right off the hop is that it's very it's very strange that a player like Dougie Hamilton's been moved twice before he yeah. turns 25. Uh, so a big right shot guy who's a, like a, a surefire first pairing defenseman should not be getting moved, especially on his contract. Like he makes good yeah. money too. Like a, it's a reasonable contract. Uh, so. You know, I heard John Shannon say that, you know, when everyone goes out for dinner, he's, he's the guy who, everyone's going to mock season, he's going to the museum with the quote, I think. And yeah. I don't really do that as a negative so much, but yeah. so he's obviously insinuating that he's not, a, he's not a team guy. He's not hanging out with the boys, but that, that's really not a reason to dish him for me. So I think it's very interesting that Bill Peters is coming from Carolina now to coach Calgary. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he, he didn't really get along with Elias Lindholm all that well. And, you know, some people said he buried Noah Hannafin. I think he was more he sheltered Noah Hannafin on that third pair. So we'll, we'll see how that goes in Calgary. Uh, just, just you know, at first glance sort of thing, I like it for Carolina. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of debate on both sides. Some people saying it's a bad trade for Calgary. Somebody saying it's a bad trade for Carolina. You get that with every trade, and I think especially when it's a blockbuster and you have names like Dougie Hamilton and Noah Hannafin trading places, you're going to get – I think that kind of disparity with, and, and it's always, it happens in every trade, no matter the, the magnitude of the trade, there's always fans on one side who believe they could have gotten more, or some fans believe that they got robbed, so I think you're going to see that no matter what. Um, on, the, on the draft floor, a question for you, because I know you spent obviously some time down there in, in Dallas on the draft floor, are some GMs just talking to others just to kind of stir the pot on social media? I know they really don't care, but we, we see it so often, I, I mean... I think I saw a couple times that Lou Lamorello and, and Bob Murray were talking. Of course, nothing comes of it, but it makes it makes everybody makes a huge deal of it on Twitter. So, Oh, man. Uh, I think these guys are just bullshit. <laughs> They're just like you, you see it. Everyone's kind of hanging around, coming around, shaking hands. You know, yeah. how, how's the family just catching up? Um, I tell you, before the draft actually happened, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, we were hanging out, you know, at the hotels and stuff, and the Ducks were staying at our hotel, and we were at the Fairmont World. Tons of other teams were, and, uh, you know, I think I saw almost every GM in the league, and they were all on their phones the whole time. And yeah. so I'm, I'm assuming they were talking to each other. And so I know Pierre Dorian said on, on Friday night there that that was as quiet a day as it had been, you know, all week, it, yeah. that nobody was really getting into much on Friday. And so, yeah, I, I, it's just these guys, that, you know, they go back, they see each other, you know, multiple times a year, and they're just they're just chatting, and that's that's what yeah. we're all doing. I was around shaking hands and, and having conversations with people, and you know, just having a good time, see if you can hear some stuff. But but really, uh, you know, I'm sure some of these things can happen quickly on the draft floor if there is some action. But this year, that wasn't the case. Yeah, and it's always just funny to see the the mayhem caused on Twitter by by one tweet of, of two GMs just talking on the floor or Kyle Dubas picks up the phone and everybody thinks that, that he's end up he's gonna trade William Nylander or something. So it, it's always funny to to see the mayhem caused by that. Uh, last question I have for you, because I know you, you're short on time. Uh, you're, you're obviously looking forward to the summer after you've got a couple shows to do today, but uh, you got to start looking forward to 2019 at some point in the draft coming up then. Uh, what, what can you say about Jack Hughes? I know, of course, you, you hope he, he ends up being a Vancouver Canuck come 2019 draft, but what kind of uh, talent is he in comparison? I've heard people say he's better than maybe than Austin Matthews and, and Patrick Laine, but I, it's hard to judge. But by, what are you looking forward to in, in 2019? Uh, well, it was definitely looking forward to Jack Hughes. The kid is a tremendous talent. Um, so now I'm not going to sit here and say that he's better than Austin Matthews is because yeah. Austin Matthews is a few years older and he's taken steps in his development. But at the same age, he is a better prospect in my mind. Yeah. Uh, and, and definitely better than Line was at the same age. Line kind of, you know, came firing out of the gate there in his draft eligible campaign. But so the, the speed that Hughes brings to the ice is, you know, as as dangerous as anyone I've seen since McDavid sort of thing. So he has just elite, elite speed, great edges. And he's one of these guys that, that sees the play and thinks the play two, three steps ahead of everybody else. He, he finds the soft areas, great hands, elusive, gets the up and under the bar. Yeah, his distribution skills are, you know, he's got A's across the board. He, he's a slam dunk at this point, first overall pick. You know, some people might think that, you know, Capo Cackle might be 
uh, comparable. Like it might give him a run for his money. And, and I like the Finnish kid. He, he's a good player too, but uh, they're, they're not that close for me. So uh, he, he's a very, very special player. The, the most interesting, interesting thing to see is where is he going to play? So, uh, we had the opportunity to talk to him this weekend, and uh, there had been rumors floating out there that he was really trying to hammer home his high school courses this summer and, and get to the University of Michigan and potentially play with his brother Quinn there if Quinn decided not to turn pro. Um, but it doesn't sound like that's happening. It doesn't sound like Europe's going to be an, uh, an option like it was for Matthews. Uh, for labor law reasons, he won't be old enough. Uh, so it sounds like he's going to be back at the at the program this year playing with the U18s, and it, it's which is a little disappointing. It's going to be kind of peewee hockey when he's playing the USHL guys, but he will get to play some NCAA teams too and, and get challenged that way. And, you know, just look forward to him destroying the world juniors this year. Uh, he could have been there this, this past winter and put up big numbers too. So that'll be what we're looking for. And, uh, and next year he'll be hearing his name called first. Yeah. And, and as a Vancouver fan with, with the 17 seasons of the Sedins over and now Quinn Hughes being drafted this year, I'm sure you're hoping for 17 seasons of the Hughes brothers in Vancouver come 2019. Yeah, absolutely. We ask uh, we ask Benning that too, and he said, "I I hope we're better than we're better next yeah. year than that." But you know, with the lottery system, you might miss the playoffs a few points, and you still could get lucky. You know, it wouldn't be Vancouver's uh, history of luck, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. All right, perfect, Cam. Well, thank you for taking time out of your busy day. I know you're trying to get back home, uh, and you're currently in the airport now, but thank you so much for coming on the, on the show. Yeah, not a problem. Thanks for having me on. No problem. Is there anything else you, you want to plug uh, here, you, anything you have coming out that you want people to, to go listen to or go check out? Uh, no, just, you know, follow me on Twitter, Crazy Joe Devola 3 uh, It's always fun if people get the reference there, and uh, I'll probably take a little break, uh, maybe look at putting up some, some fantasy rankings from now that we see where players ended up. Uh, throw that up maybe this week or next week, and then uh, just regular ramblings on the, on the main site there, and then we'll start looking at the 2019 crop. We'll probably put out that first ranking sometime in August. All right, perfect, Cam. We'll take care. Have a safe flight home. Yeah, cheers. Thanks. All right, so that was uh, Cam Robinson with Dauber Prospects. Uh, I'd like to thank him again for coming on. It was a great interview, just kind of getting some insight to uh, some of the Ducks prospects that, that got drafted. And, and Patrick, speaking of Ducks prospects, for anybody that uh, wasn't keeping up to our Twitter uh, in the last about 15 minutes, uh, Isaac Lindstrom is coming on the show, um, so we're going to have to do something interesting here. We're going to actually have to call him live on the show and, and uh, try and get him in here. The off the cuff stuff, man. I love this stuff. That's so cool. He's even going to come on the show. Yeah, I'm going to have to, to figure this out on the fly here. Um, so, I mean, all you people live right now are privy to me trying to add him into the call. Uh, anybody listening later won't be able to hear this. So, we'll, we'll get him in here real quick and um, we'll get the interview going. So, but yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to, to get him in here. Like you, like you said, it'll be, you know, I didn't expect it. So, it's nice when, when we can actually get. Uh, one of the players in here and talk to him. I mean, the last guy uh, we talked to was Max Jones. So it's always nice to, to have him on, uh, to have these guys on and give a little bit of insight, especially when he just got drafted the other day. So it's always exciting. Absolutely. All right. Look, trying to avoid some, some dead air here, so. <laughs> That's all right. If you're, if you're listening, like Eddie said, we'll make sure we cut all this stuff. Uh, you still want me to hear, you want me uh, hearing me talk right now, actually. So all the dead air will be cut. <laughs> How are you patching them in? You call them direct through your cell? Uh, I, I call them directly through Skype and then add you into the call. So we'll get them in here. It's always like so much easier when you do this um, <laughs> when you do this beforehand. And then you get a message, you're like, yeah, I'm ready to go. And we're like, oh, uh, we're live. So let's, uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll patch you in like we're pros. And then we're sitting here trying to get them into, <laughs> into, the, uh, into the call. And it's not, uh, not going as to plan, but we'll get it going here. Ah, uh, that's all good. All right. Looks like we're going here. Uh, if you guys can't end up hearing him in the chat, let me know and I'll try and fix things uh, when he gets in here. Hello. Hi. How are you, Isaac? Hi. Good. You? I'm good. Are you. You can hear us. All okay. Is everything's good? Yeah. Perfect. 
Perfect. All right. So I know you're uh, you're out celebrating with your family, like you said. So thank you uh, for joining us. I know it's been a busy couple of days. Yeah. No problem. So yeah. Uh, thanks for coming on the show, Isaac. Yeah. What? Yeah. So we'll, we'll get into it. Uh, I'm-